So, just in case you were wondering, I'm still in Pozo and you're thinking, Ben, where's the action? Well, yes, yes, there is no wind. I don't think I've ever been to Pozo or one that I can remember where it has been this light. I mean, if you're living in Europe, you will know this summer or this even season, it's been very strange. It has been very strange and it has been no different here in Pozo. So we haven't had any windsurfing since my last video. We have been surfing. Yeah, and it was absolutely firing, like right hand point breaks everywhere. The wave super long. There was one problem, it was bloody busy, like super busy. Every man and his dog was out there fighting for waves. So it wasn't easy to get your own wave, but when you did, super nice long lines, really fun, really fun surfing uh, and glassy conditions. If you're interested in watching a surfing video, I'm not gonna put all the surfing clips on this channel. It's a windsurfing channel, but Johannes, Mr. Drone himself is gonna be doing like a little uh, video of the surfing and the drones and stuff, which would be worth checking out if you're interested in that. Even just some of the scenics is just absolutely crazy. Um, so if you do find yourself here with no wind, um, and you haven't brought your surfboard because you came windsurfing. There's only one place to go. Poso winds, of course. They've actually got a load of fire wires. And they've got some KTs. They've got some proper boards. And that is where you should definitely be renting your surfboard. Or maybe you're not into surfing. You can get an e-bike. Oh, yes, you could. Or maybe buy some new windsurfing equipment. Yes, Pozo Wind still supporting the training diaries. Um, but I thought with you guys at home waiting for action, the World Cup is coming up and the forecast looks like it's going to fire. So no practice and then straight into the World Cup. Maybe we might get a couple of days before. But I thought what I'd do is throw it back to 2009. 2009 is where slalom happened the last time slalom happened in Pozo. And also, Philip Costa won, and Ricardo Campello tried the triple forward loop. Hi, I'm Ricardo Campello. This is the last day of Pozo. Uh, the conditions were great. Uh, we had a lot of win, and I had a great comeback. Uh, I was third, so I'm super stoked to be on the podium again. I lost my heat against Victor. I was super overpowered. I was on my 3-4, super powered up. Uh, now they had a great final between Victor and Costa. Uh, Costa had the sickest heat. It was unbelievable. He really deserved first place, and I'm happy for that. And now I'm gonna try and go for, for my mission, which is do the triple loop. Well, I just came out of the water uh, on my second triple loop attempt. Uh, to be honest, I think I got a bit uh, closer than last year. I, I have to see it on the video, I didn't see it yet. But uh, I'm really happy. I tried it, tried it twice. It was a bit crowded and the wave was very choppy in, the, in between the waves, so it's hard to jump. And I was super overpowered on my 3-4. On the second one, I mean the second attempt, uh, I landed pretty hard and I landed my knee on the board. As you can see, it's pretty big crack. Let's see if I get the bonus. I hope I will. <laughs> Stay tuned at BoardSeeker.com. How crazy is that? So if you're wondering who the guy was on the beach, Martin Bradner. Yeah, the brand manager for JP. If you've seen the podcast, he has got some amazing stories. You haven't checked out those podcasts, check them out. But uh, rumor has it, I think there was a 10,000 euro bonus if Ricardo landed the triple. Did he land the triple? Did he get the money? I think they paid him half. 
I'll have to confirm those rumours, but I'm pretty sure. Um, also, I'm going to throw it back 2009. We're going to stick in some slalom just to give you a feel. These were edited and done when I was doing stuff for BoardSeeker.com back in the day. So you're about to see my first ever go at commentating. 14 years on. I'm still going. I reckon I got a bit better. Let me know in the comments below if my commentary skills have got any better. Okay, round eight here in Pozo. We've got uh, the final. It's going to be a tight final. This is round eight. It's obviously getting near the end of the competition and the boys are pushing for that top spot. So we could see a general recall. I'm not sure. They're all slowing up, actually. So it looks like a few of them have got there a bit too early. They're trying to slow down. I don't know if a few of them are going to be over. Oof, I think that's a massive general recall. If that's not a general recall, my name isn't Ben Profit, but yes, it's a general recall. <laughs> so we can round eight here in Pozo. Uh, the winner's final. We've had one general recall. We have Pete Volwater go out. Uh, we've got Kevin Pritchard go out and Ross Williams. So that's, I mean, that's I mean, crazy. So them boys are not going to be happy. And uh, OK, we're coming up to the, oh, it looks like there's a few people gone early. Josh looks like he got a killer start unless he's over. No, that's a, that's a good start. Oh, no, it's not. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. It's a good start. So they're flying down the reach. We've got a Neil Pride out in front. Looks like maybe. Look at me, Mike Abuzainis. Looks like he's flying in these lighter airs. Oh, gee, who's that on the bottom? That's Al Bo. He is flying down the bottom straight. He could actually, just depends on the angle here, he could actually be leading into that first mark. Doesn't look like it from this angle, but as they get closer to the boy, you'll see he's probably out in the lead. Unless Micah decides to cut down on him. Yeah, that's going to be close coming to the first mark. Albo gets around there first, followed by Buzainis, cuts inside, nearly runs a cameraman over, followed by Josh Angulo, then Bjorn, Musulmani, looks like Bordes, and then Matt Perch. So Matt Perch is guaranteed a seventh in this one. Worst result he could get is a seventh. Perhaps three guys have already gone out. That's a great result for him. But hopefully he'll pick up some place down this reach. So out in lead, it's Albo. Fight for second, he's hotting up. There's Angulo, Musulmani. Come in there. <laughs> and Bjorn. Bjorn looks like he's wanting to get back into this. He's not had you know, sort of the great results we sort of take Bjorn to get, but he looks like he wants to at least take second in this. He's putting the power down now, maybe trying to catch Albo. That's got to be hurting him, finishing at least second. Yeah, Albo in the lead, Bjorn second, Buzain has slipped to third. Okay, so Albo flying, flying in the lead. Looks like he should take this one. He doesn't make mistakes when he's in the lead. We've got Bjorn behind him, really putting the hammer down, trying to catch him, but I think he's got his work cut out. He's, he should be fighting for second. As Buzainis is trying the lower line into this, Bjorn is heading down hard now, not trying to give him anything. Yeah, so he's cut off the route for, Bu uh, for Buzainis then, but he's still gone inside. He could get ahead of Bjorn. Bjorn's a big fella. It's going to take him a lot to get going. Uh, Angulo's fourth. Musulmani, oh, and Bordes slows up there, and Perch, he's gone into sixth position. He's going to be happy with that. The other two are still in his sights, depending on that last jibe. But, like I said, out front, Albo looks like he's got it wrapped up. The fight for second between Buzainis and Bjorn is going to be a good one. This last jibe, Bjorn's gone up high. Buzainis is trying to get in. He should be able to make that tight enough, unless Bjorn tries to cut inside and then take a a tighter line to this last mark, which is what you need, because the finish line is obviously shorter if you come upwind. It feels like you're going faster going downwind, but you really want to cut this neck the last boy. If it's tight for a finish, you want to be next to the boy. But it does look like Buzainis has got Bjorn here. I can't see Bjorn charging past him. He's going to try and go underneath, but I think he's got his work cut out there. Albo finishes in first, a little chop off over the line. Buzainis coming up in second pretty easy, I think. The one too worried, Bjorn in third. And then fourth for Josh. He's got to be happy that fight for oh, fifth place now. Oh, there's a three-way battle between Musulmani, Perch, and Bordes. It looks like Perch missed out. Musulmani, Bordes, and Perch in seventh. Good race. Yeah, so there you go. That is what we've got to expect. And if you listen to some of the commentary, it said a light wind day in Pozo. If you look at the competition that we've got coming for you, it is going to be cranking like three three weather on the wave kit 
and it looks like as long as the forecast on there's three days of slalom i think that's what they said in the whole world cup competition so if we carry on with that forecast we might see some absolutely insane slalom so stay tuned to the channel we're gonna hopefully bring you some action from here in pozo i really hope so um with some actual windsurfing in it there is a chance today that we might get some down the line so that's something interesting to look forward to. Like I say, stay tuned to the channel. See you soon. Oh, oh shit. <laughs>